Mr. Chair. Uh, call the Honourable David Cunliffe. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we are here to debate the title and commencement of the Child Support Amendment Bill, and that is an opportunity for uh, members to draw together the overall themes of the debate in this committee stage. And, uh, the title is often the focus for that tying together of ideas, uh, and I think it should be called the Child Support Almost Amendment Bill, because it has been an almost process over almost five years that this government has been working on this, and they almost created a meaningful reform. But they didn't quite, and that's why we're voting against this bill. It's a huge lost opportunity, and it's a lost opportunity to address the plight, and I got this wrong in earlier contributions, of 133,000 children who are dependent upon child support. I thought there was a proportion of that total who were dependent, who were in sole parent families, but I now know that that is the total number of children dependent upon child support. 133,000 children. That is a staggering amount of vulnerable kids in our community, in our country, that are dependent upon what this House does tonight. And the problem is it's not doing enough. It's just not doing enough. It could have written the interests of those children into the law for good and always. It could have reflected the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child in this law, but it didn't. It almost did, but it didn't. It could have restated that the overriding goal in the event of a separation is to provide for the well-being of the children of those partnerships, because the adults are the ones making the decisions and the children have no choice. The adults have choices. The children are dependent. The adults created the problems. The children pay the price. So for the 133,000 youngsters who are in that challenged situation, we say we are sorry. We have worked hard in the Select Committee to bring the government to the point where it could include a legislative priority for their interests, but national members voted against even consulting their minister on that international best practice. I find that so disappointing, Mr Chairman, that they would be prepared to march in lockstep with the executive rather than represent in this parliament the interests of 133,000 faultless, vulnerable, young New Zealanders. Mr Speaker, it could be called the inadequacy of payments bill, another part of the child support almost amendment. Submitters raise concern about the, prime, the adequacy of payments because of the formula in the legislation, particularly given the fact that the baseline here is that so many of those children are living in poverty. What we do know about when families break up is most often, despite, despite the fact that these laws exist, most often the situation of the mother, who is usually the custodial parent, and the kids, they are the ones doing it tough. Most often, the dads are able to recover financially and find it easier to move on with their lives because they do not have the primary burden of childcare. And worse than that, the system that we have had, which is only partially, only almost addressed by this bill, which we can't yet support, the system has locked out parents who may have had the best of intentions but were unable to keep up with their payments and have then been slammed with penalties which have locked them out of the system. And too many of them, Mr Chairman, too many of them have left huge holes in the hearts of their kids and ruined their own lives by fleeing the country, Mr Chairman. It's a human tragedy on a vast scale and this Parliament could have almost fixed it. But it didn't, Mr. Dotcom. It didn't. It did not. There is no pass on mechanism in this bill. It could almost have fixed the problem of pass on, 
but it didn't. The committee was confronted by extensive international evidence that liable parents, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, um, I'm going to call the Mr. Chairman. First call, David Cunliffe. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. International best practice is very clear on this point, that where parents know that the finance that they're providing goes straight to the children, they are more likely to pay it. They are more likely to meet their obligations. And that's also been set out very clearly in the Labor and Green Party's minority view to the committee report, and we hope that the public and the courts uh, will have regard to those minority views. The adequacy of the payments is not strong enough, and national members say this, this has been their overriding rebuttal, I suppose, that this bill is not about child poverty. Well, hello, for 133,000 New Zealand children, this bill represents their lifeline. Because if it wasn't this bill, it would be an entire dependence on the taxpayer that that government says that they are thrifty and frugal to protect. So they can't have it both ways. And this bill contains a $42 million extra price tag to the taxpayer and less money going to mothers and dependent children. It's a conjuring act of such stupidity that it's hard to credit it took four years to get there. So no wonder we cannot support it, Mr Chairman. And the implication for women, Mr Chairman, with this child support almost amendment bill is that on average women earn less than men, they're more likely to be the primary caregivers, they're more likely to be vulnerable, they're more likely to struggle in a post-separation environment. Many women will be worse off as a result of these changes. You know, it was almost a reform bill, sir, in the sense that we almost had the opportunity to come up with a formula that people could actually understand, but we didn't. This House hasn't. It's come up with a formula so opaque that I'm told it took an extensive whiteboard session with multiple explanations by officials to the highly qualified members of the committee who after a while could almost grasp it. And if it took a bunch of tertiary qualified members of Parliament half a day to get their heads around a, an arithmetic formula, even investment bankers uh, like the Earl of, uh, of Otahuhu over there, uh, Mr Chairman, then it's no wonder that parents would find it extremely difficult, extremely difficult to see their way clear to voluntary arrangements that would protect their family when the counterfactual requires a crystal ball to stare into to be seen, Mr Chairman. Thirdly, sir, it's an opt-in system. Sorry, it's an opt-out system replacing an opt-in system. And that matters, sir, because it was almost an amendment which could have protected natural justice, but it wasn't. And it wasn't because this bill requires people to be proactive in telling their employer why they can't have access to their personal financial details. And, Mr Chairman, it should be the other way round. Every working New Zealander knows it should be the other way round. Our personal information should be private until and unless we choose to make it not. Otherwise, you get the Paula Bennett phenomenon, where people's personal government-held information is put in the public domain for the purposes of suppressing dissent. And that is a shame. That's almost as good, Mr Chairman, and I may be slightly tangential to the title of this bill, it's almost as good as the Prime Minister's memory when he has meetings with casinos, Mr Chairman. But we won't go there in this bill. Mr Chairman, the adequacy of inland revenue's computer systems is the next issue with this almost amendment, because if we could almost get the community's head around the formula, if we could almost see our way clear to the interests of the children, if we could almost protect the women of the country, sir, Inland Revenue's computer could not deliver, because, sir, it needs $1.2 billion worth of upgrades. Mr Chairman, finally, this was almost consistent policy making. I say almost because my mind is drawn back to 2005 when Judith Collins said, writing off debts 
sends the worst possible message to absent liable parents. And in 2007, sir, when she demanded that action be taken against parents so that they are stopped at the border if they have an outstanding liability. And then she went further, because she doesn't like being too subtle, apparently. She supported making avoiding child support an arrestable offence, Mr Chairman, and now they're writing down penalties. Almost Mr. consistent. Chair. Mr Chair. Mr Chair. I can hear you. I, I, call, I call the honourable member, Melissa Lee. I move.